Hey. Hey, it's pretty good back on the 10th of July, 2011, in my back garden. I'm in Cashel County, Tipperary, Ireland, and I'm making a short recording. It's about 10 minutes long, though. Look at that stuff through um, Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc. And what you're seeing, if you're watching this, has been uploaded automatically by Google+. Plus. I teach a course in uh, Tipperary Institute, LIT Clonmel, as it's going to be recalled. And I'm trying to teach students how to look at stuff, hashtag it, market. So when they do that, content that they create will go up to Audioboo. My place is audioboo.fm, stroke top gold. Over to YouTube, I'm top gold there. And I have a website called insideview.ie. So I looked at some of the Sunday papers. I bought a few of them here. You can see the Financial Times, Sunday Times, the Sunday Business Post. And in the courses I teach, I think it's important to emphasize topics such as ethics, corporate social responsibility, teach semiotics, skills, technology, jobs that uh, creative multimedia students may want to have. A little bit about awards, uh, especially for startups. Finally, the short thing about unions. Everything you see happening here is being done live with a Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc phone in my back garden. One take wonder. So, it, unfortunately, the, the outline that I showed here won't, won't follow, but let's just go some of the papers. This is inside the Financial Times Weekend magazine, and it's a story about Google uh, proposing to basically set the stage for what it means to be a corporate citizen in, in the 21st century. Now, what's interesting in this article is that it gives me some ideas of what we might be able to use in the ICT EDU conference, the ICT and Education conference, that might involve the man himself. Eric Schmidt actually might involve Google. We're looking at Google.org. Doles out grants, hundred million dollars last year, and uh, it's a lot of money to be given away. Google Ideas, created last October, sets up a reputation for doing things that most corporate units would strive to avoid. Good stuff. Um, I'm bookmarking that, hashtagging it as it is. Ethics all over the paper. What to do in the face of having problems with the way your staff investigates stories all over the UK Irish map about news of the world and basically a lot of people up to 12 people are going to get thrown into jail perhaps for uh, hacking in the phones um, and that the issue be the financial issue behind this which is what the Financial Times would cover it is whether Mr. Murdoch Rupert Murdoch's big hold on the media is actually being done by executives that are fit and proper holders of a broadcast license. Ben Fenton, George Parker, and Andrew Edgecliffe Johnson give it a front page coverage in the FT Weekend and it spills over in every other paper that I could buy in Ireland today. Tougher landscape beckons for the press under, in terms of regulations. Salamander Devaldi and George Parker write about that there's an inquiry right now trying to figure out how the culture allowed phone hacking to actually keep going. And there's documents been given to Scotland Yard that shows that the newspaper was aware of the fact it's much more, much more extensive than they thought. U.S. jobs data stokes fears for stalling recovery. One American living in Ireland, so anything at all the United States does when they sneeze, we feel it as a tsunami. Richard McGregor and James Politi in uh, Washington are pointing out that the U.S. had just 18,000 jobs in June, really low, potentially, because the unemployment rates ticked up to 9.2 percent now. It's going to result in a poorer market for the Irish to sell into and a poorer tourism market for the Irish to attack. Digger in the hole. Murdoch eBay, Empire at uh, at Bay. If you're going to read this analysis article in the Financial Times, I do it on the iPad. Uh, seriously good stuff by Edgecliff Johnson, Parker, and Fenton. And, you know, at the, at the root of it, a lot of things you can circle. I circled the idea that party leaders in the United Kingdom were keen to get the support of newspapers, so they turned a blind eye to the way Murdoch and his crew are actually conducting business. Lots of messages in that. Inside the small pullout area of the Financial Times, there's a section called Entrepreneur that I read in the ca category called Awards, hashtag called Awards. Jonathan Moles writes a story about award shortlists, and he says, look, don't just go after every flipping award. If you're going to do that, just go ahead and buy your award from something like Marketing over, co over Coffee, and they'll give you a nice, handsome award for uh, less less than $50. You can see the problem with doing this one-handed stuff drops. And uh, in the article by Moles, he points out Jerry Canelli. He fingers him. Jerry Canelli won the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur Award. That's Native Ireland in 2005. He sold it over, sold stock by his company over to, to uh, Getty Images uh, a few years later. And uh, good man. Good push for Ireland, Inc. Win an award. Go places.
front page story in the Sunday Times that's also part of the Murdoch, Murdoch Empire by David Lippert and Jan Uncle Thomas. Nine journalists, three police officers potentially are facing jail in connection with the News of the World's hacking scandal. I'm within two inches of this article. Can you tell? I don't know if the focus maintained itself. That's really cool. The phone, Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc, auto zooms when you're doing video. This is high steel. Well, it actually isn't. The iconic image, something you might see if you, um, if you do art books. The two people in that image are actually Irish. I'm going to get the book called High Steel. Whenever I go to New York, try to stay in high-rise hotel. They, they're all high-rise, you know, 30 or 40 stories. And if you look at the bronze plaque next to a lot of the elevators, you'll see the names of a lot of Irish. And uh, at the short note, talks about the story because it's actually a photographic exhibition that's going to be um, screened called Men at Lunch, documentary about Irish immigrants in New York in the 1920s and 30s to be screened next year. I'd love to get that for the courses I teach. Probably won't happen next year, the year after that one I'm teaching media writing. Put that on the curriculum. This is the Harry Potter generation, the news review says. And um, Generation Potter is what it's called. The I don't know if the term's been uh, keyed by Eleanor Mills in the article in the Sunday Times, or if it's something that's come out of Sonia Livingston's work. She's a professor of media and communication in the Linda School of Economics, an expert on teenage commu computer habits. Adolescents just keep interacting. They're online all the time, never offline. And I'm educating them in my classroom. It's an article on unions inside the focus section of the Sunday Times. What do they want? Asked Mark Paul. The fact of the matter is, what do they need to do? Because as, a, as the evidence shows, the revenue base is dropping because the union uh, memberships are dropped. They're not talking about maybe merging, having a bigger voice, cutting down some of the expense. Union membership is falling, but so is employment around Ireland. Also in the Sunday Times, articles about how to get back on the track of, of working. Learn to tap into the digital boom, says Kathy Foley. And she outlined several different courses that are being run under programs such as Springboard. Um, certificates that would help somebody who might have been employed in another industry, such as building, construction, get involved. Overhead, the sound of planes flying towards the rock of Cashel on this cloudy day. Nice, pleasant day. Here's an issue in semiotics. Front page of the paper, the Sunday Business Post. Your man Gay Mitchell wins nomination to run for the Iris, president of Ireland, and the party leader looking off on the side. There's a message in that. In his inability to smile like a Cheshire cat on the day that the party did its election or the nomination of the candidate. Sean Sherlock, is a junior minister, looking at ways of uh, pushing maths and what he points out is that, uh, you know, we're looking at ways of having students take project maths and people, detractors, are pointing out, yeah, you know what, it's going to encourage a lot of students to just go ahead, who are strong, just go ahead and take the easier maths curriculum, get points there, and concentrate on other areas that give you leaving cert points. So leaving cert is like the SAT in the United States. You get high numbers on that and you get your course of choice. It's competitive here entering college at a lower tuition fee than what you pay in the U.S. Here's another company, Voice Sage. It's won an award, two awards at the Frost and Sullivan Global Awards in California. It won the 2011 Global Entrepreneurial Company of the Year Award in Communications and Enabled Business Processes and the Frost and Sullivan GPS Award. So, 20 people were employed in Cork, Dunleary, and London offices. And Paul Sweeney, if you're watching, good on you. If you're going to work for a company, Work for a company that wins a proper award, like Voice Sage. Outbreak of a very civil war. I put this under the concept of maybe austerity or maybe CSR. Yeah, it would be corporate socially responsible if the judges wrote in and took a pay cut, even though it means potentially some major stress between the legislature and the judiciary in Ireland. Pat Lee has a story, and the backstory is Alan Shatter, who was a low paid solicitor, has issues with barristers from which a lot of the judges come. The ranks of solicitors are normally at the lower end of the feeding chain when it comes to legal profession. And Chatter, the minister, is trying to force a lower salary level for judges because Ireland just can't afford it. These things JLCs probably couldn't be afforded either. Brendan McGinty points out that there's been a recent high court ruling in Ireland on joint labor committees. Um, how, here's how they work. Under the JLC system, 
It sets minimum rates of pay above national minimum wages in certain sectors, and as a result, it's forced some companies to have problems just staying in business. JLCs are gone, uh, minimum wages up, so I think that's good for everybody else. Uh, and McGinty, who is the IBIC director of Industrial Relations and Human Resources, would say that's a good thing to keep those JLCs at bay. Reality bites for Fina Gale, says Pat Leahy. The electorate is sick of austerity measures. There's a message in that if you're in a PR course. The idea would be give us some spin to make austerity more palatable. If you're involved in startups, Elena Reagan has a really cool story about fund bonanza for startups, she calls it. The EU is releasing a research fund of 11 billion euro this month. If you're an innovator, you're involved in innovation as a company, she outlines basically in a full page story how to get some your hands on some of that money. Peter Hanrahan says, look, Facebook fatigue's kicking in and it's a time consuming chore, I would agree with that compared to Google Plus. Adrian Wechter says video calling is still in the future. Um, you know, I, on one hand I agree with him, especially how he writes it. On the other hand, I have close and casual friends and we connect with things like FaceTime, spontaneous video calls. So Adrian, depends who your friends are and whether they all have to have a good hair day. We have some stuff around this back garden that we have to work on. Flickr.com stroke photos stroke Gary size shows you the photos. It's been a good summer so far. All well, the strawberries have finished. Some tomatoes are starting to bloom, and the beans are coming up as well. So, if you want to come visit, I'm on Foursquare. I'm also on Twitter as Tough Gold. Thanks for watching. Connect with you on Google Plus. Come to my back garden. Have a ball. Bye for now.